first some kind of semantic stuff just to properly label everything. So first off, um, what would you officially title the marching band? The Sound of Lakes Marching Band. Yep, we, um, a buddy of mine teaches out in Western Illinois in Geneseo, and he calls his, his band uh, the Maple Leaf Sound. They're the Maple Leafs. And I, they were at, um, I think it was Naperville, like maybe three or four years ago. And they announced themselves that way, and it just got me thinking. Marching yeah. Eagles? What does that look like? How does that work? So then I thought, the sound of lakes, huh? Because it's all about the music, and so it just seemed to fit. Yeah. So. Well, I think it's fitting as well. Yeah. Um, and then is there like a nickname you would get besides that? You know, I, um, when I introduce us at football games, I call us the pride of Lake County. I mean, that's just self-imposed, you know, pride. So I don't know if you want to use that as a as an official nickname. Um, I think the Sound of Lakes fits, you know, for that. Yeah. But maybe that's something we could have the students come up with, a, like a, a members only nickname, you know, that we know and no one else does. Yeah. Some of the drum courts have stuff like that. And then, um, so obviously, Mr. Heil came in kind of recently. Um, right. Could you inform us specifically when? This know? is Mr. Heil's fourth year. So when the current seniors were freshmen, that's when we were able to increase our staff and hire an assistant band director and an orchestra director. So, um, yeah, we went through a whole interview process and the whole thing, and so yeah, I'm on board. The, this is his fourth year. All right, and then just kind of going through the rest of the marching yep. staff. So, Well, Mr. Smith, he worked at Emmons for three years, I think, something like that. And so then he came on board. Um, it was either the same year or the year after Mr. Heil, so pretty close together, because um, we, we called them the Smile, you know, instead of the Heil, so that was fun. Um, Mr. Geller uh, taught with, worked with us. He's been writing for us for, how many shows? Maybe three or four shows, but not all in a row, because he did one a few years back and then has done the last two. Let me look up here. Um, I'm looking. I'm, I'm looking on the wall where all this yeah. stuff is going. Because um, House of Cards was not a custom show. The Room was not a custom show. Um, but we did a couple before that. So he's been around. <clears throat> I'd say the middle. You know, maybe 2011, 2012. He's been around for the last six or eight years. Something like that. I know it's a long answer. For one person. Uh, this is Mr. Smith, our percussion writer, first year because previous to that. Brendan Harder wrote all of our percussion stuff, and he was he was the Jacob. He was Mr. Luba for a long time. He's been with the program. I mean, Mr. Harder was with the program for um, really since it started. Maybe a couple of years after we got going, he came on board, started working with us in different ways, and started writing and growing into his own. And then now that he's um, during that time, he was going to school, and so it kind of fit his schedule, and now that he's out working and being a grown-up, he doesn't have time for us. <laughs> so um, so that's why we looked for Mr. Smith. Mr. Massimo's been here for 10 years, um, and then Mr. Luba for three, Ms. Pucci for, because when Brendan Harder walked away a couple of years ago, Jacob um, jumped back in. Ms. Pucci, same thing. She's been here for four years, I think, and then Ms. Phillip coached for two years, but was um, a marching, she was a student and graduated in 2015, I think, something like that. So she was a student here when I was on board. Yeah. Um, really, obviously you mentioned uh, Mr. Harding, but um, was there anyone else previously? Yeah, Mr. Well, Mr. Harder. Um, yeah, that's fine. And then Mr. Smith, he's now a previous member of our staff. Um, our first color guard coach, his name was Dave Schlewe. In fact, he's who I bought the old trailer off. He had a he had his own winter guard going for a while, and he was trying to get out of it. And he had this trailer with all this you know, carts and all this stuff in it. So he wanted to sell it. So we bought it because we were getting to a point where we needed a trailer. And he sold it. To them. He was our first color guard coach couple years and then he had other other stuff to, to go and do and we had a little bit of a difference in how we, we approach things so we made a uh, hey what do they call that when you uh, amicable breakup I guess you call it we both decided like they were kind of heading in different directions so 
Um, I'm trying to think of anybody else. We've had a couple other people write for us. Um, Dr. Boo, who is the director of bands out of Northern, wrote our first show. I noticed you asked about our first show, so we can get to that one a little bit. Um, he wrote our first show. And then I've worked a couple times. His name is Key Poulin, P-O-U-L-E-N. And some people say a Poulin, Poland, you know, different ways. Um, he's, he's a couple of the shows that are stock shows that we kind of like. Um, the Four Horsemen, House of Cards, and um, you know, the shows that have been for us. Would you give like a band motto besides, you know, Link's motto? Hmm. First thing that came to mind was better than the last time. <laughs> you know, we're always trying to get better. Yeah. So I feel like, in fact, there was a, a student that was here um, that graduated two years ago, and they had a little band, that, and they called themselves better than the last time because of the whole notion of you're always trying to be better, better than your last time, better than the last time you did it, better than last year, better than last decade, whatever it is. So, um, so I think I'd go with... That would be my first thought. All right. Let's, again, the, I like the origin. Um, now getting into the actual like, show stuff. Right. Um, what was the title of your first show? The first show, our first competitive show, was in the 29-2010 school year. And it was the music of David Holsinger was the, was the name of the show. Um, he has written a lot of different band music uh, in a variety of styles um, and it really was because like hey if we're gonna go out and compete I want to make sure that I'm using good quality music so we just took some snippets from full pieces and built a show out there. and um, that's the one that Dr. Boo wrote for us or he arranged it. Um, and, I put that okay. and then um, as a genuine it's not on the page you mentioned it's your first competitive show did you have like just kind of non-competitive marching shows we did that? when we first started when we first started the marching band, which we didn't have marching band the first year because our first year was freshmen, sophomores. That was the 04-05 school year. And we didn't have any varsity sports at that time, so there was no football team, so there really wasn't a need for a marching band. Plus, then it gave us a year to kind of do concert band and get our foundation set and all that kind of stuff. And then the next year, the 05-06 school year, we then had varsity sports, and that was our first year of marching band. Our first show was a John Williams show, John Williams collection, it just seemed to work. A lot of the music was recognizable. Um, the second year, was that the Mask of Zorro? I don't know, I don't remember the second year. One year we did the Mask of Zorro, and then our last year before, that might, that might have been the 06 07 school year, because then 07 08, yeah, 07 08 was we did a Bon Jovi show with lots of props and peen and parents needed and all that. And that was kind of like my test to see if we could do a competitive style show yeah. that needed a lot of support and work. And uh, we passed the test, so we started to do All right. Um, so kind of continuing on this list about the first show, um, approximately when did Van Camp start? When did we do our first one? Yeah. We did our first band camp that August of 05. We had our first one because that was the first year for, um, for marching band. Yeah. Um, and then what was your first public performance the show, whether or not it was a commercial? <laughs> Let's see. The first public performance of the marching band, I'm going to go more that direction. I think it would have been that Lindenfest parade in August of 05. Because it was right after camp. Um, that's always our first performance of the year. You know, because it's before, it's during that weekend, that first weekend in August, I think, is when they have it. And it would be, it would have been, um, that would have been the first thing. So, probably played the fight song. I don't remember what we played. I know we got a Mayor's Choice Award. It was the first award we ever won. <laughs> I think it was just because it was cool and it was the new school and just all of that. So, um, so we got, that's one of those awards that's in the, in the, uh, in the trophy case. Um, I think that was probably the first <clears throat> public performance of the group. 
Um, first, you know, the first football game then would have been that that fall. Yeah. The first home game. Our first day at school was August twenty third. Um, so somewhere after that was our first home game. Okay. Of, of, uh, yeah. Cool. And then, um, well, I'm assuming that was the full show then. Yeah. I I don't remember. I don't know if that was. I would think it would have been because before we started doing shows with more complexity, we would really push to try to be done during camp. Yeah. So then it was teach it in the summer, revise it during the school year. Yeah. Um, what was your first competition where you performed the show? Our first competition was out at uh, McHenry. They host a competition. It's more of an exhibition, and I think it's called like the. Warrior Marching Fest or something. I don't know if they still do it because they've changed directors a couple times since then. Um, but that was our first competition that we went to. And then that season we went to, I think, three three shows. Then that one, um, Grays Lake North was not up and running yet as far as the competition was concerned, so we weren't going to that show yet. <clears throat> I'm trying to think of where else we went that first year. We probably went to the Lancer Joust. Yeah, I don't know. I don't remember. And then, um, obviously, there's a, only a couple to pick from, but um, I guess, again, it's been, what, almost 10 years now? So we'll just say, what, uh, what competition did you receive the best from you? Or what was your best performance at a competition? In that year? Oh, boy. I, I, off the top of my head. I, the one that comes to mind is the first one in McHenry, just because we it was our first ever competitive performance. And... They also had a thing where after you played, one of the judges came and gave you a clinic. They had three judges that were there. I remember the judge saying, this is your first ever competitive show? What? You know, he was really surprised by the level that we were at um, to do that. So that's the one that really sticks in my mind from that first year. And then, um Moving into the more the more recent show, right? It's going to be the same question. So, you yeah, know, what was it titled? Well, this last one was, um, of course, the Sorcerer's Incantation. Was this last year? It was composed, as I mentioned earlier, with the staff. Um, and we did was composed. I guess the word you want to use there is arranged, because there wasn't any original material. Right? And so arranged means you took somebody else's material and you... Um, so that's the word that you want to use for that. Um, and yeah, uh, Zach Geller arranged that for us. He did the winds and the front ensemble, and then uh, Andrew Smith did the, uh, did the battery for the drum line. And then, um, and then we had to pay for rights for music that's already out there. So like yeah. incantation and dance, we had to pay to have the rights to arrange good news about the other stuff, it was, it was all public domain. Because once it gets so old, 75 years, I think I'm right, 75 years after the composer's death, anything they have written becomes what's called public domain, which means anybody can use it to um, for their own performance. Yeah, that sounds correct from what I know. Okay. Um, so the first public performance of the show, I would say it was at the end of Bandcamp. Do you remember right. the date off that you guys know? That would have been what August. I think that Monday was August the fifth. Five, six, seven, eight would have been August ninth, maybe. Would have been our first performance of this of this last year's show at our camp. Um, you could consider that the first one I thought of was our scrimmage performance. On, um, how that week, week later, I think. Around then. Mm -hmm. And if the first performance was partial, which it was, well, right. When do you know the date of Down and Throne for the whole show? That was October 12th. Okay. Might be bad for this. Yeah. Um, uh, let's see if I have that. For, oh, yeah. First competition date. So that would be the North. So it would have been uh, Grays Lake North. Um, these are all on the calendar, so you can double check this and see. Because even back a few years ago, you can still go back and look at old, old calendars. And um, it's always that weekend after Labor Day, so it's usually, I think it was the 10th, something like that. All right. And then, uh, 
What was the best score in the previous season? This past year? Yes. Uh, we broke 70 at, uh, at U of I. So that was, that was the best score of the year. So that was, that was really good. And, um, for sure, what's the post? So let's get that question. Right. Uh, what would you consider the marching man's most known performances? Besides what? Oh. Competition or otherwise. Hmm. Well, I, I think the preliminaries performance last year at Downers Grove that earned us our first ever finals for at a competition is, is significant. Um, I'd have to say this year's U of I performance would be significant because it's the first time we placed there and it was our highest score of the year. Um, in 2012, we placed third at ISU's um, competition, which is also considered a state show. Um, and that was Pandora's Box was the name of that show. So I'd have to put that performance on the list because that, um, you know, between the U of I placement and the ISU, that's the highest state placement that we've had. Um, and I always felt really good, I'm pointing over here because there's flags on the walls, but um, I just felt really good about the Outback thing because we had to apply and were accepted to that we were one of 25 high school bands from across the country that were selected and while we didn't perform alone at the football game we were part of a mass band there was a lot of music that we had to learn for that it was it was a big deal it, it felt like a big deal and then they did a really cool parade um, close by that had a Mardi Gras feel to it and I just remember it just seemed it seemed really big time to me. It just felt that way so I've always that that's always been one that's been in my mind as a, as a cool, um, kind of part of something bigger than yourself. It's not just your own performance, but you were selected to be a part of a larger performance. And then, um, is there anything else you'd like to add to like the history? Maybe I'll add this. Um, I think there's more history to be written. I'd love to go and march at, a, at an inauguration some year, apply for that, you know, one of the years that we have an election. I think that would be cool. Um, love to march in one of the big time parades, um, like the Macy's Day Parade or maybe the Rose Bowl Tournament or something like that. So I think that would be something that we put forward to kind of add to our history. I would love to get to some of the big events that like people in the public know about. Like if you say you march at the Macy's Day Parade, people know that. Big, you know, or or like the Tournament of Roses for um, The one thing that works against us there is that those parades are typically like groups that are larger than us and that we would kind of ever be. So I've always, I've often wondered like, is there a combination with our sister school? Maybe we put together our bands and see if we can get it. District 117. I don't know. Um, Closer, I'm going to ask you to be open to more of this in the future, uh, i.e. with like the orchestra. Absolutely. Like Absolutely. Yeah. It's the, somebody who's been here since the start, I would, I would love to share this. All right. That'd be great. That's all the questions. So. Thanks, man. Yeah. Good job. Right. Thank you.